so much action in this one, you just might have to push for a seat. So get ready to break that huddle because we are about to tee off an all the best highlights. As you know, that's always our rest. So make a run for that favorite spot because Sports Night is next. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sports Night. I'm Joe Young. And I'm Howie Spurn. We, we have a lot tonight. We're not going to we be able do. to banter at all. No, last, and and last, last week we tried to fly right through things because we thought we were going to get the double 15, you know, get the 15 exactly. minute show. Uh, do it in half the time, but uh, uh, and we talked <laughs> too much then. Now we don't have enough time to talk and about Howie Day. Will. We but still we still will. Yeah. You will recognize the theme as we move along. We do have a lot of stuff to talk about. We will start with the baseball team. Uh, they started on Wednesday against the Blaine Bengals uh, on the road, and they come up just one shy. Uh, or they, We're off to a rock and start. One they run, they yeah. get the one-run win yes, over the Blaine Bengals, improving their win streak to four games all in the conference, and uh, the Cardinals playing some pretty good ball. They, they have been, and then they hit a little bit of a, a bump in the road, as you'll talk about. Well, yes, they were feeling pretty good when they hit the road on Thursday. They had a four-game win streak. There we go. And now my teleprompter. They had a four-game win streak, and they there had... You go. There, look, you, there you go. There we go. Do over. There, Look, wow, this show is off to a rocking start. Looking strong as they headed to Champlain Park. The Rebels beat Coon Rapids twice in last year's section tournament. The Cardinals were looking for a little payback. No score until the fourth. Cardinals with two in scoring position. Nobody out. Connor Boone pushes it through the hole on the right side. Michael Zimbeck scores. Matt Essler advances to third. Boone went two for two with a walk and an RBI in the game. Up next is junior uh, Justin Reeves. Grounder to short. Whoopsie. Right through the wickets. Taylor made double play ball, but it's a run for the Cardinals instead. Dumovic, the chance at the plate with a couple and nobody on. Sends a fly to right. Boone tagging up a third. Watch the throw from Champlin's wow. Tim Munn on the money. Easy catch for the catcher, Smith. Beautiful F9-2 double play. Rebels respond in their half of the fourth. Eric Peterson doubles to the gap in left center. Riley Johnson on his horse immediately from first, and he ain't stopping at three. He'll cruise home to get Champlin on the board. Move to the fifth inning now. Game tied at two. Noah Boulay. Little number that squirts down the line past the diving Wojo. Tyler Schmidt is going to round and score from second to give the Rebels a 3-2 lead. That was the first of four runs in a Champlain Park inning. The Rebels run it up in the sixth and it and ended early. Boulay diving Schmidt in for this from second again. Boulay went four for four with a double and a triple. Champlain Park scores six in the sixth and end it with a 12-2 victory. Yeah, they, they took control. And I just want to know who does your sound effects because they are stellar. I like them. Today today is off to a wonderful it really start. Is. Can we just rewind Let, and yeah. start over? Let's, well, let's see. My turn. Let's see how I I do. worked really hard on the show before I got out here. And it shows. I <laughs> The, Car the Cardinals. Uh, we're, we, well, got we, have, we got more stuff to talk stuff about. To go. uh, the prompter gets ahead of us and then falls behind. It's going to be a rough one, folks. Yeah. Um, baseball team beat Anoka, got right back on the winning track with a 3 2 win over the Tornadoes. School Me Meester had a couple of RBI. Jake Hansen <laughs> took the loss. There you go. All right. I, wins, losses. It's all the same to me, apparently. It, apparently, the today. numbers they all look alike. It's your birthday, and I'm my. Well, it was eyes my birthday. Old. It was it's your. It's no birthday. longer my birthday. No longer. The Cardinals open play this week with a couple of home games, hoping to get back on the winning track as this show should be. <laughs> you couldn't have asked much more from a spring day, warm, sunny, light breeze. And what the heck? It was my birthday, a beautiful day for baseball. The Cardinals welcoming new conference rival to Tino Grace, who is off to a nice 6 2 start for the year and looking to make an impact in the Northwest Suburban. So Tino wastes no time getting on the scoreboard, top of first, runner at third, one out. Max Meyer with a fly toward right center. Ben Mazinga will score easily as this one falls in for the RBI single. Cardinals first chance at the dish and it pays off. Runner at second and two out. Michael Zimbeck find the gap in right center. Tyler Wojciechowski will hustle around the corner, get home to even the score at one run apiece. We're going to move to the fourth. We're tied at two. Cardinals battling with two out, Connor Boone, a grounder to short, should end the inning, but it's a mishandle, and Cody Thompson scores to give Coon Rapids the lead. 
We're still in that fourth inning, and luck has landed for the Cardinals in the form of a Texas leaguer that falls in no man's land. Danny Matthews will score, and it's Coon Rapids by two. Unfortunately, things began to unravel late in the sixth inning. Boone is going to come up here, has this one get away from him. Jen Radizek will come in to score on the wild pitch, and it's a one-run game. Still nobody out in the sixth. Hunter Lindquist with a fly shallow to center. Great effort in center, but can't make the catch because Ingle will score, and we're tied up again. Runner at second, two out. Joe Johnson able to sneak this one down the line to right. Lindquist go around and score to put the Eagles back in front. Turned out to be the winner. And Coon Rampers is going to fall by a score of 5-4. to four. Yeah, a little up and down the week, on the week for, for the Coon Rapids yep. Cardinals. And, uh, you know, we've seen this before. The bats take a while to get uh, heated up. Uh, they're, they're starting to put some, put some good numbers yep. on the board, but uh, struggling to keep teams down late in games. Yeah, and, and that's the key. And I, I was over there for about you know, an inning or so yesterday before the lacrosse game, and and they were they had an opportunity to come back in in the bottom half of the seventh. They just couldn't get it done. They had runners on, but couldn't score. Yeah, the Cardinals host Irondale on Wednesday. They're at Osseo on Thursday. Uh, turning now to softball, the Cardinals started uh, last week on Thursday with uh, Champlain Park on the road. They lose a nail biter to the Rebels, two one. Uh, and this is the Cardinals problem to this point in the season a hard time putting runs on the board they're getting good defense great pitching uh, but just uh, haven't been able to get the offense going that bats not coming around it as of up to this game and then that's one thing I know coach Nina is a little concerned about is hit the hits and being able to score runs with that good defense and with that pitching. Yeah, and uh, Friday night was the softball team's annual youth night under the lights with construction at Sand Creek. This year's event was moved to Al Flynn Park. The opponent this season, the Crosstown rival Blaine Bengals, a team guaranteed to give the Cardinals fits. They were only two and four, but they were scoring six runs per game. And the Bengals start quickly. First inning runner at first with two outs. Callie Doyle with the drive to the gap in right center. It's going to run all the way to the wall. Mallory Stone is going to run all the way around the bases, scoring from first to give Blaine the 3 0 lead. Third inning bases loaded. Nobody out. And Mary Pardo lines it to right. Kaitlin Hamby scores easily. Anna Marie Cassidy right behind. The two run double made it 9 0. Next batter is Kendall Rippick. And Rippick rips it. Right back up the middle, another run scores. Blaine runs away with this one, 11 to nothing in five innings. That was, it was a tough game. It was cold. It was windy. It was rainy. And uh, and they just couldn't get anything going at the plate. And give credit to the Bengals. They did, get a good, did a good job of getting runs and getting that lead early. Yeah, and the Cardinals had a couple of shaky uh, moments on the they field did. early on that allowed the Bengals to get uh, that big lead. And with a team that, as we talked about, has had trouble scoring, uh, you get in a big hole early, and, and it's an oh, no, here we go again. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, but the Cardinals have bounced back. They have come on strong the last couple of days, starting into this week strong. They went on the road on Saturday and beat St. Cloud Tech 7 1. Care was 4 for 4 in that one. Uh, Tatino Grace on Monday. The Cardinals win 2 to 1 in eight innings. Nice. Not getting a lot of runs. Nice to be in the other end of that to, score, though. Yes, absolutely. Sam Anderson helping her own cause, going 2 for 3 while pitching 8 full to get the victory for the Cardinals. And then this just in, Cardinals Out winning 10 nothing in five over Roosevelt this afternoon. Yeah, they did a nice job of, uh, Coach Neighbor says, you know, the, the opp opposition wasn't good, but they took advantage of that and they and they poured it on to beat them in five innings. That's a nice win for them. Yeah, and a, a little win streak coming and they've got a new conference rival, Irondale, at home on Wednesday yep. and they're at Osseo on Thursday, so an opportunity really for them to continue this win streak. A couple of teams that that the Cardinals should be able to compete very well with. Yeah, hopefully we'll see we'll see what happens. So we have a good racket going here, so let's keep things going, shall we? We a shall. After getting their first win of the season on Monday last week, the Cardinals started a streak when they took the courts again on Wednesday. Park Center Pirates, another conference opponent struggling with a young and inexperienced lineup. For the Cardinals, trying to gain some stability in their season, it was really a must win. The CTN was crew uh, there was there on a very windy day at Bob Pivot Court, focusing on first and second singles. Bobby Yang was strong from the baseline all match against the Pirates' number one player, Kamal Lakas. After dropping the first two games of the match, Yang pretty much took control. He got Lakas moving and beat him with a strong ground choke strokes. 
on his way to a 6-3, 6-1 win. A nice job there. He really did take control of that, of that match. Captain, sophomore captain Aaron Bauer was similarly impressive at second singles. His serve was dominant. Coming up as he, he kept Nathan Tao on his heels all match long. Bauer and Tao battled close to the beginning of both sets, but Bauer was able to find more winners down the stretch. A great net volley here, as you're going to see, goes to Bauer, as will that match. 6-3, 6-3. Just good play at the net, Joe. And, and both singles players really took control of their opponents and won handily. Yeah, and it was a, it was a nice day, a little bit yes, breezy. Um, we had a nice wind break. We did. Called the truck. Yes, it, it was but, good. Uh, it was a good but thing. Both, both players looked looked impressive, and it, it was nice to see the, the, the court management of the senior leader, um, uh, Bobby Yang at first singles, and then Aaron Bauer, the sophomore captain. Uh, very good court awareness, but an outstanding serve, even in the wind. Yeah, as we talked about, they really needed that wind to kind of get, get things going, it's because they had a week in front of them that really was an opportunity for them to gather wins as well. And they, and they did with, uh, with with a big weekend ahead of them. They continued on on Thursday and beat uh, Spring Lake Park 7-0. A sweep. If I hadn't mentioned it, uh, they did end up winning 6-1 to over Park Center. Yes. Um, they uh, beat Spring Lake Park 7-0 and then had the Bob Pivik Invitational on Saturday. They started with a 4-3 win over Rogers. Moa getting his first varsity win on a match. at fourth singles. Getting it in a tie break at 10-4, yep. and the team swept in the singles. And Coach uh, Storick said that was the first time in quite some time uh, they'd been able to do that. Uh, for the rest of the tournament, they beat Fridley 5-2 and then beat St. Paul Washington by that same score. And uh, a nice a nice day out again on Saturday yes, for for them to play tennis. Um, and, they, and they get some momentum, as you talked about, uh, in their home uh, tournament. Well, yeah, and they and they get over the 500 mark for the first time this season, and, and that's something that they're looking for, and they hope to continue to, to build from there. Well, and they're they're back into some tough conference play. They they uh, took on Andover this afternoon. We did, we'll have those results for you next week. Uh, they host North St. Paul on Wednesday and Centennial on Thursday, and Centennial always a very good uh, conference and section of always always. Uh, moving ahead to track and field, they had the. Uh, uh, they were at Centennial for a try meet last week. Usually, this stuff is all in the well, prompter was, in front of It was of rushed us. this week. It was. It rushed. was a little bit because yes. we're so packed. Um, do we have graphics for the? Look at that. We do. Uh, the only graphic, I guess, is the Hamlin Elite Meet. Uh, Callie Harris, the only Cardinal invited, uh, and she did well. Eighth place finish in the 300 meter hurdle. Yeah, nice job for her there. They also got. Uh, I actually had a try meet at Centennial along with Blaine uh, last Wednesday, I believe it was. I got those results, but uh, we didn't; those didn't quite make them in time for show. Uh, so we'll keep on moving. Talk about uh, golf. The boys' golf team starting the conference season at North Fork last Thursday. Cardinals come in with a 361. Uh, Travis Hess has a low score with an 84. Ryan Blockfellner an 89. Blake Novinska 93. Michael Elson a 95. And Jeremy Howells a 95 as well. Cardinals were at Rush Creek on Monday for the second Northwest Suburban Conference match of the season. For some teams at this point, it's about establishing themselves within the rankings. For the Cardinals, it's more about improving their games and continuing to lower their scores each time they take the court. Travis Hess was enjoying the nice weather for the Howie Day. He struggled in, on the front nine, but cleaned it up on the back to finish with the team best 85. Michael Elson sporting the coolest pants on the course again, also sporting one of the best score cards after the front nine. He had a 38 at the turn, comes home with an 87 for the day. Ryan Blockfilner struggled a little bit with the course at Rutch Creek. He added five strokes to his previous round score and finished with a 94. Blake Navinska had his best nine of the season to start the round, came in with a very respectable 89. Tyler Getz had one of the most consistent rounds on the team. Great little pitch right here. He goes to the clubhouse with a 91. Jeremy Howells was the final Cardinal on the course, and you know, some rounds you just want to forget, but they still huh. give you gems like this one. A great little pitch and pretty? run for Jeremy, but he finished with a number of 119. 
Yeah, I petitioned Washington. I'm trying to get them to change April 27th to I'm, Howie Day. Howie Day. Yeah, I haven't heard back yet, but I'm working on it. I, I've enjoyed it. We'll mention it once or twice more if you haven't gone on. <laughs> um, the boys... Uh, Boys are at Golden Valley Country Club on the 4th and at Loggers Trail on the 5th. Girls play some golf as well, don't they? The girls girls played some golf as well. Yes. Well, if you can believe it, with the last Tuesday's match being snowed out, Wednesday was the Cardinals' first chance to take the course in a conference contest. The Cardinals getting some of their top players back in the lineup and still trying to get everybody back into the swing of the season. We start with the captain teeing it up on the right side of the ball. Tara Peterson has a nice round to lead her team in the conference opener. Coming up here, she's going to get just enough to drop this putt on her way for a 52 for the day. It's in the hole. Just barely. Tina McManus, she's up next. She it's all the harder it needed Absolutely. To be. She takes a few more strokes that would have liked, but finishes with a solid outing. Her 62 was second on the team at Shamano. She's got company Megan Buckley with a nice round to finish with a 62 on her scorecard coming up here as well. She's going to put this putt in, in the hole. Allie Bissett, she's able to contribute. Coming up here, another solid score for the Cardinals, fourth scoring spot. 65 for Bissett, gave the Cardinals a 240 for the match as she puts that one in the hole. Yeah, and, they, and the girls are young, and, they, and they've talked about that. They, their score's coming down, though, with each outing. Um, did we get the girls' golf score from today? I, I don't believe we did. All right. Forwarded emails did not make them onto the uh, list. Apparently not. Okay. Uh, they did play. I'll have those for you next week on Sports Night. Uh, the girls are at uh, Majestic Oaks for a tournament with the, the Northwest Suburban Conference opponents. This is something they added this year with the addition uh, of the 13th yep. team. They now do two uh, separate nine-hole tournaments. Uh, they will uh, be at, they will host Elk River at Bunker Hills on the 5th. And now we continue to we move do. on. We do move on. It's not often. <laughs> this is just. It's not, this it's not often just, that this show is smooth. <laughs> is that what you were going to say? It's not often the show is this bad, but especially when I, I was feeling pretty good about the, the writing, but the, the writing is stellar. Just watching sections. It's not often you start a season with four straight home games, but that's the fortune this year's boys lacrosse team. They weren't quite as fortunate, though, in their opponents during that stretch. After two losses, uh, the Cardinals asked to bounce back and face Maple Grove that had put up 31 goals to win their first two games. It's the Cardinals that start strong, though. Nick Gervais, a little spin move to find some room up top. He fires it on the hop to the back of the net and put the Cardinals on the board first. Cardinals continuing to pressure. Miguel Ginoza scoops and runs to the top of the box. Crimson laid way too much room, and he puts another one past the keeper to make it an early two-goal lead. But Maple Grove come backs with a, comes back with a flurry. Five unanswered goals. Great setup from Matt Savanich to Tom Wolden for the finish. Coon Rapids able to break up the streak, though, in the second quarter. Noah Stanek shoots through some traffic to find the back of the net. And the Cardinals still in this one at 5-3. Crimson keep coming, however. Another long run by Savanich started behind the net. This time he's going to take the shot himself and bury it. Maple Grove goes up 7-3 at the half. Things got worse in the second. Crimson starts to pile it on. Jake Wilson scoring this one for uh, Maple Grove. Crimson lead 11-3 at that time. They cruise to the 18-8 win. Maple Grove, pretty good team. And the, and the Cardinals, you know, they are able to give them somewhat of a battle and they were able to score eight goals. But I know, you know, that's been some of their issues this year. But they're starting to play a little better as well. Well, they now. are, and, and again, they started with four home games, but against four very she, tough opponents. Absolutely. Um, and since leaving home, uh, they've bounced back a little bit. Their first road game, also their first victory of the season. Uh, oh no, their last, their fourth home game. There was that's the they got their win. The fourth home game. That's yep. correct. In the fourth home game, they got the win against St. Cloud Tech. That is correct. Just, uh, I need my teleprompter. That hey, shows yeah. how badly I need my teleprompter. Um, yeah, they beat Owatonna at home on Saturday, 9-6. to six. Did that one make it? 
I no. that one either. No. Okay. No graphic. They beat Irondale 9-7 to seven on nice. Monday. Nice. Boys lacrosse team uh, hosting Spring Lake Park on Wednesday, and they're at Park Center Osseo on the 4th, which is next Monday. That is next Monday. You are correct. I am yeah, correct. Absolutely. Well, the girls that. lacrosse team, they opened this week's play hosting new conference rival Irondale. Was cut and who was coming in on a three game win streak. The Cardinals putting up great numbers, but not winning as decisively as they wanted. And they wanted to change that when the Knights came to play on this Howie Day. <laughs> Cardinals start the scoring. Coming up here, outnumber the opposition at the ball. Allie Erickson comes away with it. Great little flip to herself. She's in alone. She's going to score low. Cards up 1 0. More pressure from the home team. Bailey Ryan scoops this one down low, brings it out front for the goal. The Cardinals offense is starting to roll. It was a special night for Captain Heidi Hanula, and she had, work, had to work for it. Finally finds a little space, scores with a little backhand flip. It's a 3-0 lead. Cardinals up 5-3 at the half. More of the same in the second. Bailey Ryan stopped in close, but she's right on top of the rebound. Brings it back out front and scores. She had three goals and assists in this contest. History being made later in the second. Heidi Hanula scoring her third of the game. The 100th of her career. An impressive feat to be certain and a testament to how important she has been to this program. The Cardinals go on to win by an 11-7 score. And unfortunately, Happy you, birthday, yes, Howie. Yes, thank you very much. You, said, you asked last week on this show for them to give you a, a, and, a win for your birthday. And they did. And they and did. Coach DeJoy was very, very uh, okay with that. And he said, I'll get you the win. And if, it's, if I don't, it's on me. If I do, it's, uh, you know, it's a good thing. So, you know, not being at the game, they really outplayed Irondale decisively. This score shouldn't have been 11-7. They should have uh, really piled it on. Unfortunately, they missed a lot of attempts in close that they weren't able to convert. A couple of late goals by Irondale did close the lead to four, but there was no question in this game. They controlled from start to finish. And they and that's the kind of team, especially uh, that we've seen in the past for this, this girls lacrosse program. Uh, some outstanding defense uh, and a lot of offense as well. Cardinals at Spring Lake Park on Wednesday. They will host Osseo Park Center on Monday. And thankfully, that is the end of this <laughs> tragedy we have called the show this week. Uh, well, Coach DJ was actually in the studio earlier today. He wanted to get a copy of the game. He wanted to break down tape. Wanted to talk to his girls about what they can do to improve. And, you know, if we can help with that, that's, that's all the more better for us and for him and for that, that whole program. We've got them coming up in another couple of weeks. We do. We do. Uh, we always have stuff coming up here at CTN. This week, we're hosting the Irondale Knights to a little softball yep. contest. Uh, join me and a special guest color commentator in Howie's absence for that. Um, baseball on Monday or on Friday uh, against Grand Rapids. And then on Monday, we do baseball against Spring Lake Park. And thankfully, Mercifully, that is the end of this show. I want to thank everybody out there for joining us. Continue to support everything we do here at CTM. <laughs> the entire crew, including Alex Shapiro. I'm Joe Young saying goodnight. <laughs>